almost every house has something called a refrigerator what do you think the assignment of a refrigerator is it's not just to cool whatever you put there the refrigerator is a manager of atmospheres because whatever it is that you put in there especially if to preserve the it, it is the refrigerator is built based on a consciousness that all the bacteria and everything they don't just act on food they depend on an atmosphere so the atmosphere either avoids it or slows down drastically the activities is that true atmosphere there is an atmosphere that can turn raw food into you call it cooked food it's an atmosphere when you set your food on fire and you close it you expect something to happen why do you close the pot you create an atmosphere and something happens under that atmosphere most believers do not understand the atmosphere factor as far as the miraculous is concerned and so there are all kinds of assumptions people just believe that God is in heaven he loves us he should move and we become disappointed because we do not understand that it takes more than just the desire of God to touch you for you to be touched there is the atmosphere component and this is what I want to teach you tonight there are three major components I wrote here it's just a charge that create the atmosphere for miracles that means everywhere you see the manifestation of the miraculous and the supernatural in the life of an individual especially when you see that it is a realm it is not just an event that happens when it becomes a realm of possibility continually it means that that individual has been able to capture the components to create and to live under that atmosphere and do you know the beautiful thing about the atmosphere of the miraculous is that it does not have to remain in church here you can find the ingredients and with the mastery of a chef you can transport that atmosphere not just to your house it can live with you you can create your own climate my goodness so that you become a walking breathing living manifestation of the supernatural in 2005 i was on an extensive study on the miraculous and on signs and wonders and the glory of god particularly and i began to study the life of the jews because they had such profound manifestations of the glory of god as recorded in scripture especially the old testament i wanted to study what they were taught that would cause the cloud that shekinah of his glory to rest with them in fact moses said it this way he said do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us he says how shall they know that we are a people who are separated consecrated and he said my presence will go with you and because of that presence i will give you rest the discoveries that i made shocked me because you see when you watch the nation of israel through their journey they were not people who really had weapons of war because they were on transit remember that when they started their journey from egypt they never had a chance to stop and camp it was they were they were sojourners until they got to the promised land and yet they fought yet many things happened they carried with them a formula and they carried with them a climate are we together now that when the neighboring nation saw them they were afraid not because of the dexterity of their soldiers they were largely not warriors but they understood something about an atmosphere that they would carry they would carry the ark you will read in your bible when after they made the ark they would put it at the center and even when um balaam is called to come and curse them 
he would stand and try to invoke a cause and it would not happen and he said there is a formation something about the ark in the center has created a cloud that no speakings from whatever distance can reach them he said the shout of a king is in the midst of them listen if you can create this atmosphere in this atmosphere you will enjoy immunity in this atmosphere you will enjoy favor in this atmosphere you will enjoy all things supernatural the supernatural is not limited to healings and deliverances alone every manifestation that is beyond the realm of science beyond the realm of human thoughts do you believe what you're hearing so three components very quickly let this be a lesson for us if you're a man of god here please listen if you truly want to see the miracle working power of jesus flow in and through your life genuine miracles then here are the keys are you ready component number one if you want to create that atmosphere that makes for the supernatural that makes for the miraculous component number one genuine passion and a heart of total surrender write it down the first non-negotiable component you want to create the atmosphere that is ever conducive for signs and wonders it is the atmosphere of genuine passion and total surrender Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 and 29. Total surrender. Hear what Jesus said. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He says, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest if you come unto me. Notice, he didn't say follow me yet. He said, come unto me. It takes a lot to come unto him. To come unto him means that you realize you are inadequate. To come unto him means that you realize that by yourself and unassisted, there is not so much you can do. We live in a world that is full of pride. We live in a world where we are not committed to anything at all. But if you must create that atmosphere of the glory and the power of God, it comes with a price and the first component is genuine passion passion towards what god passion towards god and passion towards the things of god god is not a herbalist god is not a magician god does not play games with people if you come to him there must be a determination within your heart the psalmist said oh lord you are my god early will i seek you my heart longs for you give it to us psalm 63. it says to see your power and your glory oh god thou art my god early will i seek you my soul thirsted for you say passion one more time say passion my flesh longed for you in a dry and thirsty land where no water is what for verse 2 to see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Passion for God and total surrender. Surrendering your intellect, surrendering your logic. Can I tell you, years ago I listened to Benny Hinn and he made a statement that I appreciated so much, but now, having worked a bit in the miracle ministry, I can tell you I understand clearer what he was saying. He said this, that in many of his meetings, please look up, listen carefully, that many of his meetings, you would find out that if people, every time people came for his meetings, if their attention was just on their healing, their problem, whatever was wrong with them, most times they would not receive. They would have to take their eyes away from the problem and focus on Jesus. Because for many people you see, they do not agree that God has the absolute power to help them. So they just feel, God, I don't want you to come into every aspect. I've managed this one. I just want you to touch this and that. And God says, you are either ready to get out of the way and allow me step in, or you finish fighting and exhaust your pride. 
and we live in a world that is largely philosophical there is over dependence on the flesh so when people come for a miracle service like this for instance you are trusting god to reach you and open doors but from head to toe you are full of yourself my certificates my qualifications i have all these things all i need is just a bit of anointing on it and i'm on fire and god says no except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning listen carefully to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow we have seen skilled people suffer as if god did not call them and we have seen weak people weak people proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and he says lean not on your own understanding it is the same god who gave you understanding to lean does not mean to not use it it means when it has to do with dealing with god do not bring your understanding to compete with him his realm is higher than your realm his thoughts higher than your thoughts most times people come to god but they are not absolutely surrendered have your way lord have your way you know that song have your way lord have your way have your way lord have your way oh lord have your way. lord i am here so that you will lift me it is not my assignment to tell you how if i could help myself i would not need to come to you don't sit down and you are saying, Lord, lift me and your mind has held NMPC. You are not going to let me. That is not how God lifts. Trust him enough to get out of the way. How you would do it, oh God, I do not know. But I know that I am in your presence. Let the lifter lift me. Over dependence on our intellect, our philosophies will always corrupt that atmosphere for the miraculous can i tell you this many times when i'm praying preparing for any meeting especially the miracle service sometimes god will usually open me to visions of what happened what is going to happen sometimes literally or sometimes i just get pictures of people's cases and the rest but i prepare my sermon you see that i do my due diligence but i never come to stand here with just an over calculation of this i come he's the lord of hosts and when I come, having prepared myself, I am completely yielded to him to move as he wills. In as much as I have a structure, but he knows that when it has to do with this meeting, he can move as he wills. You see, because I don't know except it is revealed to me. I cannot know what is wrong with you and I cannot know the area of desperation and the area of need and it is pride to stand in the way of the one who knows in fact it's wickedness it's not just pride I'm trying to help you but I'm ignorant there is the one who knows exactly where to touch you and now I will not let him touch you and sometimes you can be the limitation yourself because you can think this is what you need but from the mind of God, what you need is totally different. It is up to you to say, Lord, I, I truly believe that you can visit me. Surrender. There are times you can have pain and you may go to the doctor with, with the arrogance of an amateur and almost guessing and you can say, doctor, I am sure it is this thing. And the doctor laughs at you and laughs at your ignorance and tests you and tells you something totally different and says that's what is wrong with you but you are feeling another symptom and yet the doctor from a professional standpoint you think it's a financial problem open up your heart and let god visit you you will find out it has nothing to do with finances in fact sometimes you can think it's an issue of ill health but it is not an issue of ill health It's the ministry of the devourer he knows that the only way or the most predictable way to destroy your finances is your health if he spoils your car you will leave it there you will not fix the car so he spoils your body because he knows you will not leave that body that way and since he has found out that you like this body and you want to live long in it 
he will continue to create affliction so that your finances will suffer so to you now you can think the real problem is finances but when you come to god he will tell you it is not finances the real problem is lbc listen allow god to interpret your situation to you the first atmosphere is that atmosphere of total surrender lord i have come before you as far as i know there are 10 major problems with me disfavor no helpers oppression that's the best that i can know but i've come to you you are the wisdom of god diagnose me and do you know sometimes you see demon spirits walk like an octopus how many of you know an octopus that creature with many expressions like legs it can touch your finance same spirit touch your marriage same spirit you think there are different issues but they are caused by one and the same spirit how many of you would like to cut down a tree by removing the leaf one by one how intelligent does that sound and you are trying to say lord can you help me remove all the leaves in this area and god says no i know what the problem is the leaves will grow allow me to come and bulldoze that thing from the root and sometimes when he throws it from the root you will still see the leaf looking green and he says go and rest it's dead and he said no it is still green he says i, I know what i did ah. total dependence some of you it may be ministry ministry is not growing and based on your interpretation it is because i'm in an area that is not my maybe territorial area maybe i'm a yoruba person among houses or a house person among yorubas all those things are just flimsy reasons god is telling you the diagnosis is there is no favor on you period lord why is it that when i get a job in two weeks they drive me in two weeks they drive me and you have come with the name of your boss in your prayer request now hoping that by laying hands on him maybe god will kill him or do something but even if the man dies for instance will you really be free because what is really wrong with you is a pattern he said these are altars that have nothing to do your boss just happens to be the one that was used to oppress you because of something on you have you seen people who complain and even if the object of complaint is taken away from them the situation does not change it's not about the person causing trouble now it's about something on you that keeps attracting trouble are we learning atmosphere component number one so there has to be genuine passion for the lord and then complete surrender why do you surrender to him you surrender to allow his wisdom go before you to allow him be the one to truly interpret what you need when you go to the hospital imagine that you go to the hospital and you are seated with the consultant and you just say sir where do you keep your syringes where do you keep this and he says what for he says i want to inject myself i know exactly what is wrong with me i just want you to be a witness <laughs> and you are breaking that thing and about to give yourself injection and he said you are even doing it the wrong way he said no problem i know what i'm doing and the man says why are you then here when you go to a consultant even if you are a consultant yourself you are not a consultant in that area so when you go you sit down like every other person and say doctor or consultant abc is wrong with me and you trust him and depend on him don't come to god tonight in fact some of you in all honesty in all honesty as you are seated right now you cannot truly articulate what is wrong with you you can only tell the symptoms of what is wrong with you my money has been hanging for five months could it really be a financial issue let's find out my health has been having a problem could it really be a health issue let's find out are you learning what i'm saying now so if i'm here right now and the holy spirit says everybody stand up and start jumping around and dancing as stupid as it is that's exactly what i'm going to do 
it does not make sense to me but you have to understand that I'm not the one doing it it is the one who knows what is wrong with you are we together I never stand on stage ministering to God's people and then close that door to the wisdom of the spirit I am aware of how limited and how very ignorant I am as far as having the full capacity to help God's people is concerned you have come because you believe in Jesus and you have come because you believe in me and I'm grateful for that trust but let me tell you unassisted I'm only wasting your time I can only share scripture and say let's pray do you know what it takes to stand from here and begin to make declarations over someone's life and like that doors are opening you are intelligent can a man do that unassisted no but I'm happy to inform you I'm not alone here oh. not alone hmm. and the Lord walking with them and the Lord walking with them and the Lord walking with them number two the second component that creates the atmosphere for miracles for signs and wonders are you ready is deep heartfelt worship deep heartfelt worship apostle i'm not a musician but you want solutions but you want solutions can i tell you if you are not a worshiper there are certain dimensions and certain levels of the atmosphere of the miraculous that your mind your life will not command you see a worshiper is not just one who sings a worshiper is one whose life words and then singing creates that atmosphere for the presence of God to be made manifest singing is only a tool you can sing and you are a singer and a musician and yet not a worshiper true worship starts from the heart true worship is a response is a revelation you know who God is heartfelt worship second Chronicles chapter 5 from verse 11 second Chronicles I enter the holy of holies I enter through the blood of the Lamb I enter to worship you only I enter to honor I am Lord I worship I worship you, Lord, I worship you, I worship you, for your name is holy, you are holy. Holy are you, Lord, for your name is holy, you are holy, holy, Lord. Heartfelt worship, King of kings, Lord of lords. Faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Shalabakos, King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, I worship you. Praise the bread of life. Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. We praise the cup of life, 
that glorious spring that washes us away. Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. Can I tell you this? I've worked with God a bit. Let me teach you how to neutralize negative atmospheres. Introduce an atmosphere of deep, heartfelt, presence-carrying worship. Not senseless songs that don't carry any atmosphere. There are songs that were written by people who were just ambitious. I'm talking of atmospheres that carry fire. The reasons why I always suggest the night is not a ritual. But you see, most times in the day we are distracted. Before you even kneel down, a call has come with all kinds of things. So many people are awake, sometimes they can just be distractions. But in the night when everybody is asleep, just you and your Savior, the maker of your climate for the miraculous.